I'm going to actually show every single app that I use on the Tab Ultra C that I actually use, not that I just have downloaded and wanted to try out every app that I actually use. And, uh, you know, if the question is, which ink tablet is the king right now, or is this one, it is the Tab Ultra C. It's pretty darn obvious. And the reason for that for me is because of the way it runs these apps. And one thing that is also very really interesting though is that it does seem to be quite a lot of difference between the screen performance within different apps. So let's have a look at those and see if we can actually notice that that difference that, that I sort of notice in my daily use of it. And even when I'm using a different one at work, I, this is the one that I go to if I do need to do a bit of writing and I want to do it on e-ink. This is still the one that I do uh, when I take it with me. For instance, I had to wait an hour at a club whilst my daughter was uh, doing her gym the other day. And I really enjoyed sitting and typing away into Xtiles app on this. So let's go through the actual apps and see how they go. Firstly, let's look at the browsers. So the first browser and the browser that I naturally use all the time is Chrome. And well, let's have a look at this. Doesn't it just look quite amazing? And you might not actually see this exactly on the screen here, but watch the way that it just cleans up the white space, but it also cleans up the color space as well. You can sort of see that flickering and then it just settles. And that's really, I, I find that absolutely amazing. And I'm in the balance mode at the minute, but the, in the, even in the ultra fast, which means now it's much smoother scrolling, you can still see it doing that and you get very little degradation. And it actually clears up where there is image degradation. It actually clears that up quite quickly. You can use, can you perhaps see that flickering there? And it clears up the white space. And there's no other, apart from the other tab series, there's no other ones that do this. So I really like it. It is a pleasurable experience to be browsing on the internet here. And Chrome seems to work really, really well. And we're going to compare that to the other two browsers. I think I have two browsers um, installed on here. The actual Neo browser, I don't think it seems like it's actually doing that same thing quite as well. Maybe it's doing it better now. So let's go ahead and go to the BBC as well here. Yeah, no, that is actually doing it just as well. Actually, yeah, this, this browser is doing it just fine. It is still clearing up the white space. Yeah, there's Bing. Should we try Bing? Did you notice the actual homepage didn't do the clearing up as well as um, the browser did? But again, yeah, Bing seems to be doing exactly the same thing and really does clear up that white space and the color information really quite nicely, which is a real joy to see, frankly. I will just install Ink Bro. Perhaps it's something that I've used on the Tab Mini or something, or the Tab X, but not on here. Ink Bro is a browser designed specifically for Ink. So it's just went for sort of, really it was designed more for black and white ink readers. So if you do have a black and white books, then it is one that I would recommend that you have a little look at. And let's go again, just for the sake of fairness. Yeah, that does seem to be doing the same thing as well. It's just clearing up. Interesting, but now if I go to the homepage, I swipe across, you can see it actually doesn't clear up that color area there. I don't know, you, I don't know why it would be any different on the homepage. You'd think it would be like at its best on the homepage. So it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it isn't doing the exact same thing it does on the browser. Now, obviously I also live in the reader quite a lot. The Books Neo Reader is where I do all my sort of note taking on a PDF, a plan of PDF. So I use that a lot. It's where I do any reading that I've got to do for work. For pleasure on here, I'll read on Kindle, which I've shown a little while as well. And that is an excellent one, but I think I've showcased Neo Reader many times and the notes app. I do use this quite a lot. You can see all the different notebooks. It gets quite messy because I'm always sort of showing these off and then sort of making a brand new notepad. But I do live in here quite a lot and I do draw on here as well as um, write notes. So I just need to scratch something down. I do keep a note, for instance, for uh, common meetings. For instance, I have a governor's meeting uh, once every term and I go ahead and, and uh, sort of keep a record of those and those are kept kind of neatly as well within these folders. Drawing one, physics teaching. I did used to use this quite a lot for physics teaching. I think it looks really quite good. I think these actually have carried over from the Note Air 2, I'll be honest, but it does look really, really good. And I did share these on the screen. Uh, maybe these were actually Max Leamy ones that I used there on anyway. It's a perfectly, very, very much a usable note-taking app. Um, and I think that actually the, the software improvements from Note Air to Note Air 2 were, were massive. And now the software improvements to the Tab series are also massive as well. So it might be if the software was really letting you down when you had the Note Air, it might be worth having one more look at books as well. Apart from this, I don't really use any of these ones. I use Google Play Store, obviously. You've just seen me use that. Works really, really well on here. And it does default to different um, settings. You see, I set it to ultra fast or fast when I was on the browser. But I don't know if you can now see that actually, even in here, it isn't doing that job of clearing up. I can do the full screen refresh there. But for some reason, in the Google Play Store, it doesn't do such a great job of clearing up the white space. And I don't know why that is. I don't have any 
idea why it does it in some apps and not in others. You can now see that. It's doing a little bit of clearing up there, actually, but not as much as it was within Chrome. That would all be sort of cleaned up in Chrome. So is there something about the way that the Chrome app is set to refresh? That could be something that you want to look at. And if any books engineers are watching, maybe this might be good sort of market research. I do use Word. So you can see my uh, Microsoft apps. I've got two instances of well, have to, another instance of Word because my company wants me to go in through Microsoft 365 app and Word's within that. But I've got my the ones without the little um, briefcase badge are my personal ones. So I do use Word on here quite a lot. I am initially made my new planner here. I started it here and then finished it on the computer, I suppose, on the training day. And I do use Word quite a lot and Word works really well. Obviously, Word works great with the keyboard. And you're not to forget that when you've got the keyboard in place, you can still use all of the voice typing um, as well uh, in any different app that you want to use. You just have to sort of call up the books keyboard on screen as the, at the same time as having the keyboard there. And that's really, really good. It suddenly went a bit darker. No, it's just, it hasn't gone darker at all. It looks great. I'll just pump up the light a little bit. There we are. Um, and again, now you can see that this app is not doing the screen clearing. So I don't know why that is the case. Why is the colors so clear on the Chrome and the other browsers, but it isn't clearing up so much on here. If we go to ultra fast in here as well, again, it's not doing it, but then I press the full screen refresh and it does it. So very odd, not sure why that is. We'd love to know an answer. Anyone at books. I do use Kindle quite a lot, and this is where I would read just for my own sort of pleasure, but I also read, as you'll see, quite a lot for, for my kids. <laughs> so I basically have one slot in my Kindle Unlimited Lending, which I can just go ahead and get a free book whenever I want for my children, if they just need to be um, read to for a little bit of time. And you also get so many free Kindle Unlimited, like this is an audio book as well as a um, reader as well. And um, yeah, loads to love really about the Kindle Unlimited. And I do do quite a lot of reading on here. Would you like to see the messy one? I don't know whether this will be copyrighted content, probably not for video, so it will be okay. And it's, it's odd though, because some of these work really well with like, sort of you can zoom and you can, or you can get the text up off the page and some of them don't. So some of them seem to be really well optimized. But there is no sort of pinch to zoom. I don't think you can rotate this. Oh yes, you can. Oh, that's brilliant. I couldn't do that on the tab mini. So that's what interesting. So that looks really quite good, doesn't it? I use, don't use Flex. So I do use Outlook and Gmail, but I'm not going to show you those just because I will show people's email address and things like that. But I do use both of them really, really regularly on this tablet, as you'd expect on any sort of Android tablet. Excel works really, really well. Again, I don't use so much my own personal one. I, I do a little bit when I'm working on the comparison uh, scores and things like that in the past, but I, I use Excel linked to my work account. So within 365, I use it a lot in there as well. Again, can't show you all that because it's got kids information in it. I use Drive a lot as well. Sometimes this pops up with my email address. No, I use Drive an awful lot in here. In fact, this is where I was typing this. You open frequently here. This was the scripts that I was working on today and on Tuesday as well. So here's some things that are coming soon, but this looks great. And this does do the kind of clearing up. Can you see that? I don't know what setting I'm in. It honestly, it's got to the point where it doesn't seem to make all that difference. They're all really clear to me. Like I could use any of the settings on the tab ultra in any app pretty much. And it would just tend to work really quite good. But this gets used an awful lot. I either copy from X tiles into here or from here into prompt smart on my uh, phone. So that drive, and obviously that was like the instance of drive, which is um, to do with doc docs. So yeah, didn't get that as well. So really when you're actually editing, you you actually drive is linking into uh, Google docs app. So that works just really, really well. Uh, but you've got all your files um, obviously available on your Google drive. Xtiles looks excellent. And Xtiles is something that I've talked about in a lot of videos. I'm not spending a lot of time in it now, but I do use Xtiles great, great deal. Uh, you can see it's just, uh, it does sort of one sort of flicker and then it's cleared everything up. Uh, but this is sort of my main thing. And this is the one, one we're talking through in a minute. This is the, my notes for today's live stream, essentially. Uh, and they're on my screen here that I can see and use to ensure that I'm on track with everything that I wanted to cover. So I do do that here on here as well. Company portal, you have to use those to do your Microsoft accounts. I'm sure if you've used Microsoft on an Android, You'll know, know about that. Don't use Edge. Uh, but again, I, that was useful. These are, these are all the ones my work gives me access to. I don't actually use OneNote on here. I'll be honest. I don't use, use OneNote at all. I probably should. I do use OneDrive on here and I do use Teams on here. 
Um, both of them work fine. I don't use Teams a lot on here. I wouldn't actually do the video calls on here. I don't use To Do and I don't use EdgeLink, although I could use EdgeLink for things like registers and that for school. I do use YouTube, but not to really watch things more as a kind of reference. Look, it's recommending what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Did you guys guess what <laughs> the question mark was going to be? Which tablet I'm actually going to be talking about as if the question is, what's the best ink tablet right now? Did you guys guess what that was going to be? But just I mean, how good does this look? It just looks, I think it looks fabulous. It's, you know, it's not the same as looking at on an OLED or an LCD, but it just looks so crisp. It just looks so vivid and so crisp. And it's when you see it in a comparison soon that you're, you're going, I, I go in here for things like respond to my comments or look what's in my playlist. And, you know, I, I'm so sort of into YouTube at the minute that like, it's not just watching YouTube that brings me to the YouTube app. I do use Otter on here as well, although I use that more on my phone. But what I would do with Otter on here is access the transcriptions. You go, you go into conversations here and you can look at what you've actually talked through. There they all are. So these are like notes that I'll have made as I'm out and about. Uh, sometimes whilst I'm driving, you can just one click really easy to press or launch it with the smart assistant and you can actually just talk through a thing and know that it's doing a really good job of transcribing what you're doing. Some of the scripts, that must be a new feature. Yeah, it will summarize. So a lot of the scripts, I'll just actually speak out loud, uh, you know, as if I'm walking along with my headphones or, or driving. And that way, hopefully I write something in a kind of spoken voice rather than a sort of typed voice. So very, very useful app, Otter, I think is excellent. I know the voice transcription is really good on here. It's really good on Google phones as well. The actual just normal Gboard, but Otter is great for just, you press it once and then it just listens and it writes it as it goes. So it's great for just nothing to think about. Uh, YouTube Studio I do use on here as well. And uh, it gives you a little rundown. If you do want to know, then uh, 260,000 views in the last month. Thank you very much for each and every one of them. Uh, 12,000 watch time hours. And these are my best bits of content in the last 28 days. The famous Remarkable 2 writing feel is right up there at the top. Uh, the 10 best ink tablets. Who's seen that? Who's, who's, who's seen it? Out of these top five, how many have you seen? Um, the Remarkable 2 writing feel, the 10 best ink tablets you can buy right now. Remarkable 2 versus Supernet A5X versus Books Note Air 2 in-depth comparison. The auto dimming screen on Books Palmer has been really, really popular. More on that in a little while and then this is the best ink tablet yet the books tab ultra c review so um that was one with sort of no rival and this is the sort of real time in the last two days seventeen thousand views but anyway I, I i look at this type of analytics quite a lot because i want to improve the content that i'm making for you and it gives you me lots of signals about what you do and don't like as an audience how many out of those five have you actually seen and then lastly uh, i do use spark here again it's linked to one of my emails accounts and i do use space desk though not as often often as uh, I maybe could because I have enough sort of screens here and as you will probably be aware I've been testing out the RLCD screen Sun Vision display. Uh, Tom's asking about OneNote. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's one that's really frequently asked for demonstrations. Uh, so you'll see that I've oh, got some notes in it and it does work. The notes will sync out of a device. Absolutely. It's uh, OneNote. Android, the ugly featureless uh, step chart. No, it should all be there. You should be able to get into all of your pages, um, all of your notebooks in just the same sort of way. So I have used this at school. I sort of during uh, COVID, it was a really like important thing that we used to communicate with our classes. Um, and I did use it for a while and I would upload my worksheets and everything like this as well. But this is on my personal account, which I've hardly used at all. Um, and they have tried their best to optimize it for the ink. So no, I don't think it's the, necessarily the ugly featureless step child is a nice way to put it. But yeah, I don't personally use it a great deal. Although I know that I, sh I sort of should. I often think to myself, yeah, I really, because you, well, as a teacher, you can sort of send out notebooks and things to kids and they can always see your notebook as well which is a really really useful thing of course uh, cj spice just got in contact just to say purchase the tab ultra c and not disappointed tom i use one every day and transfers well to the books pen latency is almost as good as in the native app oh fantastic to hear that so yeah i think most people sort of agree that the OneNote and evernote implementation of the pen is sort of good enough to live with now